What's up my boys and girls? This video we're going to be talking about instance methods on any numbers. So you're also going to get a little bit of a taste of object-oriented programming in JavaScript, so that'll be fun. If you don't understand everything, that's okay because we're going to deep dive object-oriented programming later on in the series, but I just want to give you a little taste of that. So before we dive in, I wanted to give a special thanks and shout out to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. I just ask that you guys check out Dev Mountain. I'll leave a link in the description. What they are, they are a boot camp that will basically give you everything you need to know to be a successful developer and get a job in the industry. They have courses in web development, which is very JavaScript based. So if you want to learn, you know, JavaScript, React, Node.js, as well as integrating with Git and GitHub testing and user experience, check that out. But they also have courses in iOS, user experience, and much more. So it's definitely a really cool thing to do. They have courses online and in person. Check out the link. They'll give you 250 off if you let them know I sent you their way. So thanks, guys. And now let's dive back into methods. Okay, so there's two ways to call methods when it comes to numbers. So we can say number with a capital N dot, and then we get all of these different methods which allow us to do cool things. Um, the methods are actually the purple boxes and the blue boxes are the properties which are just values. And I'm using Visual Studio Code, by the way. So once again, these are called directly on number and number is actually a constructor. So what a constructor is, it's a way to create new objects. So when we do something like let x equal new number, we are using the number constructor. So a constructor is just a function. And in JavaScript, functions are actually objects. Because it's an object, it allows us to put properties on this object. That's a little bit different than what you might be used to if you're coming from different programming languages. So this means that we can call number, and on this constructor, there are all kinds of properties that we can use. The other way of calling methods is on an instance. So if we say let x equal 5, we can do x dot and access some junk in here. Numbers actually inherit from something called number.prototype. And prototypes are basically the way we do inheritance in JavaScript. If you want to see something like this, go into the console and create a new number. So we can say let y equal new number 10, for example. Now, when you say y, what happens is you can expand this and you can see it has this prototype number, which kind of defines our inheritance chain, our prototype chain. So when we call methods on this x over here, this primitive, it's going to automatically be converted to a number object. All of these methods on here are on that prototype, that number.prototype that we showed over here. Anytime things are attached to the prototype, they're automatically going to be attached to new instances. Yeah, definitely some confusing stuff, especially without going through a lot of examples of object-oriented programming. For now, just know that there's two ways to call methods. We've talked so in the previous videos on calling things directly on number. Now we're going to be talking a little bit more about calling things on instances. One of them we did talk about is this two string, which we did to pass in a radix so you could change the radix that you want to present something in. But there are a couple others. We're not going to dive in super deep. I just wanted to show you some basics. And then we're going to talk about another object called the math object. So the first one is two exponential. And what this does is it allows us to represent our number in exponential notation. So for example, if you want five numbers after the decimal point, we can just uh, see what this looks like by doing a console log. And we get 5.0000e plus zero. <laughs> oh, come on, Claire. So this doesn't help us a whole lot when we're using a simple number like five. Let's change this up just a little bit. So we could say we have a big number like this. And we can print this with 10 numbers, for example. So now we get 5.9 all of these digits and then raised to the 11th power, which basically means we need to move that decimal point 11 times, which will give us the original number. If you lowered this, for example, let's say three, we get the same thing, but now it kind of crops some of the precision. The next one is two fixed, which can be used to represent things like money, for example. So you can pass in here the number of digits you want. So let's say we want two. Well, then we could say, let's say we have five dot some other junk and we do a refresh, we get 5.60. So that can be cool if you want to format for money. So you could go in here, put a dollar sign or whatever currency plus sign, and then you'll get 560. So the next one, I'm honestly not even sure how to pronounce to local string to local string. <laughs> I'm not sure. This will basically print the number in a friendly manner depending on your region. 
So we can call that using the parentheses. And now let's print this. And you can see this is going to automatically put in commas in here. I imagine if you're from certain countries, it might put periods instead of commas. And that's the whole point of this function here. Next is two precision, which allows you to change the significant digits. So we could go in here and put two, do a refresh, and you can see it's 5.6. That's all the significant digits it has. We talked about two strings, so let's jump to value of. What this is going to do is it's going to return the primitive value of the specified object. Kind of silly because X is already a primitive. So let's change this up a little bit and say new number. So if you wanted to get the primitive version of X now, you could use X dot value of. So for example, we can throw this in the type of function like so. And when we refresh, uh, forgot a console log, sorry. When we do a refresh now, we get number. If we didn't use the value of, what's gonna happen is we're gonna get object. All right, that's all I got for instance methods. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the math object. Shouldn't take too long, I'm just gonna go through some examples with you guys. So I'm just gonna replace this with a little bit of text right there. All right, so what exactly is going down here? The way we use the math object is very similar to how we use the number constructor where we just put number dot something. You do that with math as well. So you put math with a capital M dot and then the method. There's a bunch here that I just thought I'd throw in here rather than going through a million examples. You can just use this for reference. I'm just gonna go through these real quick. Absolute value will give you the positive version of the number. Ceiling will always round upwards. Floor will always round downwards. Power will raise three, or the first argument, to whatever the second argument is, in this case two. So three to the second power is nine. Rounding will round up or down depending on the value of the decimal. Here's another example where we have 0.1, it goes down to five. This one goes up to five because it's closer to five than it is to four. The sign one is a little bit interesting. So if we go in here and we put sign, you can see a little bit more about that. It just returns the sign of x, indicating whether x is positive, negative, or zero. So in the case of negative infinity, it's going to give us a negative one, which indicates that this is a negative number. Lastly, we have truncating, which is like rounding, except a little bit more not rounding. It just chops off the, the extra junk. <laughs> so that's how you use the math object. Just thought I'd give you a little bit of a crash course in that. Thanks guys for watching. Hopefully this gave you some hands-on work with some instance methods as well as the math object. Please be sure to subscribe. Don't be a loser. Do that for me and I'll see you guys in the next video.